today we're doing we're learning about slope. This is section seven four, um, page three twenty one one through twenty seven odd. Number one through ten, you're going to graph, and then find the rise over run. Find the slope by looking for the rise over run. And number eleven through twenty, you are going to. Number eleven through twenty, you are going to. Uh, Use the slope formula, okay? Use the slope formula. I suppose number 21 through 28, you can use either method. Graph it and rise over run it, or use the slope formula. But the first part, you graph and rise over run. The second part, you use the formula. The third part, you use either method. So right now, don't start writing this part. Let's just hold off. So. We originally started learning, and we learned how to make a table. We graphed the points. And so today what we're talking about is slope. Does anybody know what that means in the dictionary? Not in math, but in the dictionary. What is slope? How would we define that? Carter? What would you say? Close, yeah. Ayla? how steep something is. And the steepness of a line is the same. If it is a line, in, if it is in fact a line, the steepness is the same whether we're going from here to here or whether I'm going from here to here or whether I'm going from here to here. Do you understand? It doesn't matter the distance, because the steepness is the same. The slope is the same. So, this is the equation for this line. When I go from one point to another, what we do is we rise over run. So, if I'm going from, um, let's, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, if I'm going, say, from, okay, this part you can start taking notes. So the variable we always use for slope is m. Not sure why, maybe mountain. I think it's something in French. So slope stands, we always use the variable m. I don't want to see you using the word slope. m means slope. And my slope is my vertical change, my rising movement, how far I go up over my horizontal movement, how far I go across. So what we mean by that is how far we go up versus how far we go across, okay? Our horizontal and our vertical movement. Um, our, another way, way you might see this is with the little triangle. What does the, the triangle mean? What word? What is that? change. You're changing your y's over your change in your x's. So that little triangle still means change. We were doing percent of change. Triangle means change. So in this case, if I'm going to go from, we like to call that, that change in y our rise. It's our up and down movement. And our run is our horizontal movement. So sometimes I always like to say, what goes in the numerator is always this movement, and what goes in the denominator is always the across movement. Questions? So, to figure out our rise over run, we start at any point, and notice, to get to the next point, I have to rise up, two units. I go one unit, two units. That goes in my numerator. And then to get to the point, I'm going to go across, run, one unit. Okay? Now, think of this. Is, this is a number line. When I go up, it's positive. When I go down, it's negative. Zero is in the middle. If I go to the right, we're going in the positive direction. If I go in the left, it's the negative direction. Okay? Pardon me? So negative slope, your, your run goes to the left, right? 
Not always. Not always. We'll talk about negative slip. Hold on. So, now it doesn't matter. This reduces to a 2. I could have taken, let's say, uh, let's go there. I could have taken this point and this point. If I do that, I'm, I'm rising 1, 2, 3, 4. That's positive 4. And then I'm running 1, 2, positive 2. What does that reduce to? 2. I could have also done this. I could start at this point and go to this point. Okay? That means I'm going... One, two, three, four, negative four, because I went down. Negative four, and now I'm going negative one, negative two, right? I went down four, and we're going across two. Or negative two. What does that reduce to? Two. A positive 2. So it doesn't matter what two points you start at. It will reduce to the same amount. Is everybody clear on that? Yeah. Um, now, we know that our slope is 2. Where is that in the equation? Where is that in the equation? Look at that equation down there. Bryce? Um, it would be, uh, it would be y equals, and then y equals, and then the slope. The slope. This 2 is right before the x. It's right before the x. Okay? So my 2 is right before the x, and in the last problem that we just worked on, what is my y-intercept? What's my y-intercept in this equation? Eitan? Um, it's... It's about one-half. No, it's not. What is my y-intercept, Annabella? Zero, negative four. N no, it's not negative four. Negative. negative three. You can see this in two places. Look. You can see it here, and you can see it here. <laughs> There's the y-intercept, and this is your slope. Right there, okay? All right, well, we don't need that right now. We just need to know about our slope, okay? Questions? All right, so given a graph, if they ask you to graph, then the easiest way to find the slope is to rise over run. If they ask you to graph, the easiest way to find the slope is to rise over run. So how many am I going to rise? How many am I going to rise, Cameron? One. I'm going to rise one. So he's starting from this point, obviously. Let's go here. And he's rising, you said one, right? Okay, so he's rising one. And then how many am I going to, going to run? Three. I'm going to run positive three. Here's one line. Two. Right, we're going one, two, three. Positive 3, and so it reduces to one-third. Questions? Okay. You don't need to write the graph down. But I want you to do the next one. I want you to do it on your paper. Go. I have a question. Okay. I'm pausing the recording. Check your slope with your neighbor. If you have different slopes, I want you to talk about it and tell me where things went wrong. So what are we going to do? You're going to rise how much? I rise to three units. Three units. And I ran two units. Good. So we're doing three over two. Now, what was your question you just asked me, Eitan? Uh, if we could uh, turn it into a mixed number. Can we turn it into a mixed number? Because no. then it's no longer a rise over run. Yeah. So that's why I've been telling you all this time, I'm okay with impropers because I knew slope was coming. So we want to keep it as three over two. Because that's how we graph it. Yeah, um, I, yes. You, if it's, uh, it's like, um, if it's like six over two, then it's 
two, Always reduce to the lowest term, yes. You can make it three. Okay. If it's a whole number, you can make it just three because we know that three is three over one. So if you ever have a slope and you have to graph it and the slope is three, how do we turn that into a rise over run? Right? That is the same thing as a three over one, and now I'm in rise over run form. And then I have a question because I just wanted to see what the homework was about. Nope, we're not answering any questions about homework because I've just given you four different, I've yelled at you four times about that. Okay, so don't ask it now. Okay, we are recording. Thank you. So if we go from here, however, I'm going negative 1, 2, 3, right? That's negative 3. You guys with me? Yes. Um, and then we're going to go positive 2. So that would be a negative 3. Sorry, not positive. When I go to the left, what is that? Negative. Negative, negative 2. So negative 3 over negative 2. Does that reduce to positive 3 over 2? Yes. Yeah, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So it doesn't matter what point you start at. It doesn't matter. I could go to um, this point right here. Any two points, you can find the slope. Yes? What is the use for finding the slope? We'll get there. Right now, let me just teach you how to do it. It's going to be, we're going to go and start predicting in real life application after we learn the skills. Okay. Let's look at this slope, okay? When we read a graph, we read from left to right, okay? Now, imagine this is your money. So the graph starts here. What's happening to your money? It's rising. It's positive. So this is what we call a positive slope, okay? All right, let's try the next one. Go. Go. You're doing it on your, in your journal. Pause the recording. Which point are you starting with? The one on the right or the left? The right. Okay, and so what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to rise up one. He's rising one, and then? Uh, then I'll run to the left uh, four times. And what, how are we going to show since we're going left? Negative. Negative four. So my rise is positive one over negative four. Did anybody start at a different point? Okay, let's go with Emily. So I went down one. Negative one, and then you went? And then I went uh, positive four. One, two, three, four, positive four. They both simplify. Negative divided by a positive equals what? Negative. Negative. This equals negative. I, I can't really, I really should have written it over. So a negative divided by a positive makes negative one-fourth. Both of them equal negative. All right, so... Um, whether we go down and across, we start and we do negative 1 over positive 4, it simplifies to negative 1 fourth. I can go up positive 1 or left negative 4, it's still going to simplify to negative 1 fourth. As long as there's only... Now, looking at this or looking at this next slope, what, where does it start, high or low? It starts high. If this were your money, what's happening? It's going down. We're losing money. And so what kind of slope is this? Positive or negative? negative. It's a negative slope. Okay? Okay? Um, all right. Do you guys feel okay about rise over run? Yes. Okay, let's move on to the next part, which is our, our algebraic method. So... We know that when we rise over run, it's... So when we are using our algebraic method, basically what we are doing is we're looking at the change in the y's over the change in the x's. So the first thing we usually do is I name my points. So notice I'm going to name the bottom point 1, and I'm going to temporarily name the top point 2. And so when I name that point, I use this formula 
the slope formula, which is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So when, when I'm calling this, what this little x means, what this little x means, what this little x means, So what the little x means is the first x. When you have the y1, that means the first y. x2 means the second x. y2 means the second y. Okay? So now all we have to do is really substitute. We've named our points. We're using the formula. The second y is what? Carter? What am I sub... is what? The big one. The second Y, I just explained this. The first Y, the second Y. The, I mean, sorry, the first X, the second... The first Y, the second X, the second Y. So what is the first, the, the second Y? Uh, it's, the, it's the one. Okay, what is it numerically, Kate? Two. Two. So that's a two. What is the first Y? Kate? Negative three. Negative three right here. Okay? We're pulling that right from this point here. I named this point is Y2. I named this point is Y1. So I'm substituting them. That becomes 2 minus negative 3. So, Carter, what is the second X? Uh, 1. And what is the first minus in the equation? What is the, the, the first x? Negative 2. Yep. So we're just following this formula. Okay? 2, when you have the double negative, it makes a positive. So it's 5 over 3. Okay, questions? All right. So when you do this, you don't have to write this whole thing. Okay, so for right now, all I want you to do is, um, in your notes, you don't need to write this whole thing. You just write the two points. You're going to put, like, negative 1, comma, 3, and then we're going to do 4, comma, 7. You don't have to write that whole sentence. I want you to write what I'm writing. Go. Now, I'm going to name the first one 1 and the second one 2. I always universally do that. That means negative 1 is what? What am I calling that? Is that the, that is the x1. What is 3? y1. And what is 4? And what is 7? Okay, so right now you're writing everything I'm writing. And I want you, every time you do this, you have to write the formula. In fact... I will not accept your homework if every problem does not have the, you do not start with the formula and then substitute in. Do not just start by substituting. Okay? I will mark you off because this is your time to memorize this formula. And there's going to be 15 different formulas. So if you don't do it as it's happening, and it won't show up on your test. So, a formula has two sides. I want to see the m equals. Don't just give me y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's an equation. Okay, so what am I substituting? I'm starting with the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Carter, what am I substituting in for y2? For y2, you substitute 7. Minus what? Minus 3. Good. Over? Good. So now that simplifies to what? It's a four, four over five. Okay. Questions there? Yes. Can we just? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. Okay. Thank you. So if it was like an equation, like y equals two x plus one. Don't worry about that because we're not going there right now. 
Um, I just want you to be able to find the slope given two points. I promise you we're going to get there the next day, but I, I want you to just focus on getting this down. So a question that you just asked me is what if I call this point number two and this is one? Okay, so I'm going to call that x2, y2, x1, y1. Okay, my slope is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then I'm y2, I'm going to have 3 minus 7. Right? This time I'm doing this minus this. And then we're going to have negative 1 minus 4. I end up with negative 4 over negative 5. What does that reduce to, David? 4 over 5. Is it the same answer? So it doesn't matter what you call point 1 and what you call point 2. You, systematically, I'm going to always call the first one point 1 and the second one point 2. I'm trying to become habitual about this. Okay? After you, after you do the homework, which you have about 10 problems to do like this, and you've written that formula 10 times, you should end up having that memorized. If you wait till the quiz, I promise you, I can't tell you how many people put the X's on top because they didn't memorize the formula. Yes, question? It doesn't matter if you do like Y1 minus Y2. Like What'd you say? It doesn't matter if what? Keep the formula memorized, so it's y2 minus y1. You can rename the points, but just keep it systematic. Don't do things 20 different times. You want to get it memorized so you don't have to think about this while you're taking a test, okay? So we're always using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, because if you start doing that, what his question is, does it matter if I do y1 minus y2? What happens if you do x2 minus x1? Do you see? Memorize it the way it's supposed to be memorized. That's not going to work. If you did that, you would have to do this, x1 minus x2, which you can, but there's more room for error. Just get it memorized the way, okay? All right, so now let's move on, and let me see you guys. You're going to try the next one. On your own. Okay, go. Pause the recording and try the next one. Okay, so we're going to call the six, the first, the first point one, we're going to say six is x1, five is y1. You said the negative one is what? And the seven is? Good. And so what's my formula? And so, what am I substituting in? Seven. Good. Over. Okay. And it simplifies to? Well, this is positive two over negative seven. And what does that simplify to? Negative two sevenths. Okay, questions? All right. Don't ask about homework, though. You have a question, though? Um, yeah, so you write, so on the, when you do the, like, it's the PowerPoint, it always says M equals 2 you just write 2 equals 2. Yeah. Like, it's always going to be like Oh, so when I'm, notice how, like, on the second time, since this doesn't change, right, since this doesn't change, I don't need to keep writing the M. Just keep the equal signs. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Just keep going your equal signs. You don't need to keep writing the M. Okay? Got to go. All right. So I want to move on to, do you guys feel like this one you understand? Make sure you are simplifying. This is not okay. This is not okay. Okay? Now, horizontal lines and vertical lines. Okay, if I have something like y equals 2, you should be writing this, k 
Okay, x and y, this is 2, 2, and 2. I'm going to go 0, 1, and 2. So 0 across, 2 up, right? And now I'm drawing the line. So, we can rise over run it, or I can do the slope formula. How do you want to do it? Rise over. rise over run. So what's the rise? Zero. The rise is zero. And what is the run? One. Okay. What does that equal? Zero. zero. So my M equals zero. Okay. On the next one, let's say this is... Um, this one is... Okay, x equals negative 3. x equals negative 3. So in my table, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. It's a 0, oh, 0, 1, 2. Right? And I'm going to plot that point. So I go 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, and 2. Draw the line. Now, What's my rise? Uh, one. one. My rise is one over my run. Zero. Okay, this is a big no-no. This is what we call undefined. Undefined. Okay, or we can say no slope. Now, don't get confused because Horizontal lines have a slope of zero. Vertical lines are either undefined or no slope. No slope means you can't do it. It's breaking the first commandment of math. It is right there. Right there it's written, you will anger the math gods. Thou shalt not divide by zero. When we see zero in the denominator, it is a big no-no, and people will, something bad will happen, and we don't want to see a big earthquake or anything like that, and anger the math gods. So, when does that happen? When there is a zero in the denominator, we say what? Undefined or no slope. Undefined or no slope. Do not say zero slope. Zero is a place on the number line. All horizontal lines are zero slope. All vertical lines are no slope. Okay? Now, somebody asked me in the homework, how do I do this? You get to choose. You can A, graph it and rise over run it, or B, use the formula, take any two points. So, let's go over the homework now because there's been many um, questions. So we said, with all vertical lines, they're undefined. With all horizontal. So, on the homework for tonight, number one through, okay, number one through, stop, number one through ten odd, you have to grasp and do rise over run. Okay? Number 11 through 20. Stop. You must use no graphing. You must write the formula. For each problem. Is that all? Odd. It's the odds. Okay? And then from 21 through 28, you get to choose your method. Those are the vertical and horizontals. You can either graph it and rise over run it, or you can use the formula. Okay? All right, that's your homework, and it's on page 321. 27? 27, 21.